In this video, we're going to install Splunk on top of Security Onion. If you need to install Security Onion, you can reference my previous video, but once that's up and running, we'll open a browser within Security Onion. I've given you a link to the latest Splunk Enterprise Edition download. And once you're there, you'll select Linux, and we're going to use the .deb package. So I've already downloaded that, and once that's done, um, we'll open a terminal, we'll cd to our downloads directory, and we can ls to see the file. We'll issue sudo dpackage tac i and the Splunk file. Put our password information in there, and it's going to unpackage Splunk and install it in the proper directories. So once that's complete, we'll go ahead and start Splunk with sudo opt splunk bin splunk space start and then we'll also say tac tac accept dash license for the first boot it's going to ask us for a username we'll put in admin and we're going to put a password in there and confirm that i recommend using admin as some splunk apps still rely on that username to prop to function properly so once it's done um we should have a web GUI available to us on port 8000. Um, but we want to make sure first that this is going to be enabled to boot on start. So we'll go back to the bin splunk space enable boot dash start. Um, issue that to make sure that it's configured. Now we want to make sure that we can get to this over port 8000 from our host machine. So we'll do sudo ufw allow 8000. That should be pretty much it. Um, now we can go to our host machine open a browser and browse to the home IDS machine over port 8000. We put our username and password information in there. I'll say sign in. Uncheck these two boxes and say OK. Uh, now we need to install some of the apps that are required. Um, now I've provided a description in the video's description provided links to all of these apps that you're going to need to download there's no particular order that you need to install them in Security Onion as long as you restart the box after all of them are installed so you just go to each of these links click on this download button and uh, you should be good to go and once you have all those files you can go in here to the Manage Apps button, the cog next to the apps title. And we're going to go ahead and select Install Apps from File. Choose a file. And we'll, I'll go to the folder where all of these apps are installed. Let's see here. It's my downloads. All right, so you can install these again in any order. I'm going to start with the Security Onion app just so you can see when it prompts you to restart. I select update app usually and see it'll say restart required we'll say restart later and I'll continue the process of installing the required apps. We'll say upgrade we'll say restart later again and continue the process so <clears throat> I'll fast forward to the end of that and I'll show you now. We're going to click restart now. And we'll say OK. Splunk's going to go ahead and restart. And once that's done, it's going to prompt us. We'll say restart successful. Click OK. And we can log back into our Splunk instance. All right, the next thing we're going to worry about is permissions for these apps. So if we go back. To our security onion instance and go to the apps folder in Splunk and issue the ls tech ls ah we can see that the apps that we just installed are owned by root um, whereas all the other apps are owned by Splunk so we're going to issue the sudo chone tech capital R Splunk colon Splunk and we'll do space asterisk and this is going to give Splunk owner and, and group permissions to all of these files. 
So once that's done, um, the only other thing we have to do is go into our squee squeal configuration and change or modify that file a bit. So that's going to be under Etsy NSM Security Onion squeald.conf. So we'll open that up in VI. Only thing we're going to change here is set debug to 2 instead of 1. So we'll go ahead, escape, right quit, save that file. Now what I'm going to do is restart the NSM services. Once that's restarted, we can go to on our host machine, the browser to take a look at if any alerts have been generated or populated the dashboards. We can go to the Security Onion app by clicking this drop down, or if you're on the main page, when you log in, you'll also see on the left here. So we'll click Security Onion. And you can see we have some bro information populating, some OSSEC events populating, but nothing in Squeal just yet. So we're going to go again in an incognito browser to testmyids.com. A snort signature is going to fire on this string and should generate an alert within Security Onion and hence populate this dashboard within Splunk. So we'll refresh the page and we can see we're getting snort signature alerts. We can go ahead and expand on this and see more information about what's going on within this uh, overview window. We can see the raw log. We can do some threat intel lookups based on information within this log. Um, another good tab is the monitors tab click on that it's gonna break everything out by squeal and bro events um, just another good overview of different type of logs that you're seeing on the network another good tab is uh, let's see mining you can look at different types of mining by service or we can look at our squeal mining alerts essentially and we can do further drill downs on who's responsible for those alerts um, you know, you can also uh, look at OSSEC agents, how you're managing them, alerts from them, different security onion services. Um, so, you know, this app has a lot of great information, a lot of great investigation tools and processes through this. So, you should check it out, install it, and uh, next up, what we're going to do is configure some Splunk forwarders to ingest more information to give us better context around these alerts.